What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Right now, we're going to talk about the famous fights recalled. This series you can find in the Ring magazine in the 1920s. My dad and I yanked these out. I have the entire collection, and we put it in the format of a scrapbook. And I would want to get into this uh, history lesson, but I want to get into it with you. Right here in the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. As you can see here, this is Jack Barton versus Jack Slack. And this fight took place in April 10th, 1750. So let's take a little journey on a history lesson through the eyes of the famous fights recalled series. So as you can see here, famous fights recalled series number one. Right here we're looking at Jim Jeffries and Bob Fitzsimmons. Now the reason why this is important for us to study this because all these belts that the fighters are wearing today came from these fighters no matter what the weight division we're looking at and this is the heavyweight division so as you can see here you got Jim Jeffries versus Bob Fitzsimmons their fight took place Corny Island on June 9th 1898 the fight was won by Jim Jeffries by a knockout in the 11th round now these fighters fought two different times and this was the last fight between the two. In the middle here, you see a, a referee. His name is Charlie White. Now, Charlie White had his fight series with Benny Leonard. I did a bio on Charlie White. Type in Charlie White, scrapbook boxing, and you'll learn what you need to know about Charlie White. You'll also learn about Jeffries and Fitzsimmons if you type their names in under scrapbook boxing. Now, this particular fight here was a phenomenal fight because Jim Jeffries was at his best at that particular time. He was born April 15th, 1875. He died March 3rd, 1953. He stood six foot two and a half inches. And he weighed anywhere between 206 and 227 pounds. He had a fighting record of 18, 1, 2, 15 knockouts. That one loss came from Jack Johnson when he fought July 4th, 1910. What was going on there was Jack Johnson was beating all the White Hopes, Stanley Ketchell included. And they couldn't get the job done, so they pulled Jim Jeffries, who was undefeated. At the time, he was retired on his alfalfa farm. And he had to lose 100 pounds. But Jack Johnson gave him a beating for 15 rounds before Jim Corbett stepped in and had that fight stopped. Jack Johnson, one of the most outstanding fighters in the entire history of the game. But Jim Jeffries was a very, very good fighter. And like I said, he fought Barford Simmons. Barford Simmons took the title away from Jim Corbett with the solar plex punch. And Jim Jeffries took the title away from Barford Simmons, as you can see here. Barford Simmons was born May 26, 1861 in England. He died October 22, 1917 in Chicago. He stood 5 foot 11 inches, or 3 quarters. And he uh, weighed anywhere between 150 and 175 pounds. Now, the distinction with Barford Simmons was he was the only man outside of Roy Jones to win the middleweight and light heavyweight and the heavyweight championship of the world. Now, he took the light heavyweight championship from George Gardner. George Card uh, Gardner fought Jack Lute. They were the first fights in the light heavyweight history, and George uh, Gardner defeated Jack Lute. And uh, Bob Fitzsimmons took the title away from George Gardner, but he never defended the title. He relinquished the title, and then Jack Dillon took the title you know, that was a uh, vacate. But uh, Barford Simmons went up to heavyweight. And this is what the fight we're looking at right now. And um, this is uh, an amazing fight. Amazing fight. So I just wanted to go through that particular fight with you. And here you see Benny Leonard and Willie Ritchie. And here you have Benny Leonard to your right. And Willie Ritchie to your left. Now, I did a bio on this particular fight through the eyes of Benny Leonard's uh, bio. So type that in, Scrapbook Boxing. As you can see here, this fight took place February 21st, 1919. It was a very, very good fight between the two fighters. Benny Leonard was born April 6, 1896 in New York. He was born in uh, Hell's Kitchen. That's a section of New York. He died April 
18, 1947, in New York. He stood five foot five and had a, a weight disparity between 123 and 153 pounds. His last fight was with Jimmy McLaurin. And he had to take that fight because a lot of his money was lost during the stock market crash in 1929. But he was one of the greatest lightweights of all time. I have him uh, between, I, I'm still trying to figure it out, between Joe Gans and Benny Leonard. Of course, Duran, I have number three. But I'm shuffling between Benny Leonard and uh, Joe Gans as the greatest lightweight of all times. So that was an outstanding fight. Willie Ritchie. He was born February 13th, 1891, San Francisco. He died March 24th, 1975. And uh, he stood five foot six and a quarter inches. And he weighed anywhere between 115 to 145 pounds. Both of these fellas were Hall of Famous. And that's where your lightweight, uh, one of the, you know, the belts came from. It came from uh, these guys here. Pernell Whitaker wound up getting that belt and others. So these are lineal titles that we're looking at. All weak divisions. Here you have Tiger Flowers and Mickey Walker. Tiger Flowers covering up under the attack of Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker was named the Toy Bulldog. Tiger Flowers was named the Georgia Deacon. And as you can see here, that fight took place. It was a middleweight championship bout in Chicago, December 3rd, 1926. Tiger Flowers took the title away from Harry Grab in 1926. Flowers, one of the greatest uh, middleweights of all time. Now here you have Jimmy Wilde to your right and Joe Lynch to your left. These were flyweights. You got Jimmy Wilde and Joe Lynch sparring for openings. And one of the hot sessions that they had, this fight uh, took place in London on March 31st, 1919. Wilde was awarded the decision. And it was a very, very good fight at that particular time. You had Joe Lynch. He was born November 30th, 1898 in New York. He died August 1st. 1965, still five foot seven and a half inches. Anyway, anywhere between 116 to 124 pounds. Jimmy Wilde was born May 15th, 1892. And he died March 10th, 1969. He stood five foot two and a half inches. And he weighed anywhere between 94 and 109 pounds. He had a fighting record of 132. He only lost three times. And he had 100 knockouts. And he lost his title to Poncho Avila. Phenomenal Filipino flyweight. Fascinating fighters. And like I said, that fight went down a linear line. And one of my uh, favorite flyweights, you had a fighter by the name of Michael Carbohol. That belt came from these fighters. And just to take you on this particular page of this book. Here you see Frank Moran and Jess Willard. That fight took place Madison Square Garden, March 25th, 1916. It was a 10-round affair. Turned out to be no decisions. You got Jess Willard to your right and Frank Moran to your left. Now, Frank Moran... He had a famous right hand called the Mary Lou. Jess Willard had lost his title to Jack Dempsey in 1919. He took the title away from Jack Johnson in 1915. This is in Havana, Cuba. Here you got George Compartier and Joe Beckett. The fight took place October 1st, 1923. Beckett knocked out in one round. George Compartier started out as a flyweight and moved all the way up to light heavyweight. George Compartier got his title taken away from him by battling Siki.
This is just historical information that's good to know. Jimmy Wilde versus Powell Moore. I did a bio on Powell Moore. This is a 20 round affair, 1919. Moore lost that particular fight. All right, now here you have Pete Herman and Pancho Vila. I'm sorry, Pete Herman and Jimmy Wilde. As you can see here, Wilde floored three times by Pete Herman. In Albert Hall, London, the referee stopped about. He stopped it in the 17th round. Like I said, Pete Herman, he was born February 12, 1896. He died April 13, 1973. He was five foot two, and he had uh, a weight disparity between 105 and 125 pounds. Jimmy Wilde, May 15th, 1892, he was born. He died March 10th, 1969. He weighed uh, anywhere between 94 to 109 pounds, and he stood five foot two and a half inches. This is a very, very good fight in Albert Hall and uh, England. Here you have Tom Sharkey and McCoy. Another good fight. You got uh, Jimmy Wilde and Poncho Vila. Famous fight. Jimmy Wilde happens to be standing to your right. Poncho Vila to your left. Now, this fight took place at the Polo Grounds. The Polo Grounds is located on 155th Street, New York. That's where the Giants used to play at that particular stadium at the Polo Grounds. So that was a very, very good fight between Pancho Vila and Jimmy Wilde. Pancho Vila wound up taking the title away from Jimmy Wilde. That was a good fight. Here you have the Scott Swap, Johnny Dundee. He fought uh, Joe Wellings. This was at the uh, Old Madison Square Garden, 1920, 15 rounds. Bill Brown was the famous promoter and referee. Today he couldn't do that. It's under the Ali Act. Didn't have any vested interest in either fighter as a referee. Here you have Jim Driscoll to the left and Freddie Welch to your right. And their fight took place in Cartwin on December 20th, 1910. Driscoll lost on a foul in the 10th round. And here you have Stanley Ketchum. Versus Billy Papke. This fight took place September 8th, 1908 in Los Angeles, California. Papke knocked out Ketchel in the 12th round. Here we see Stanley outside the ring. So that was another famous fight that went outside the ring. Louis Angel Furpo was one of them. With Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis with Buddy Bear. Ray Robinson and Gene Former. This is one of those fights. Stanley Ketcher was born September 14th, 1886 in Grab Rapids, Michigan. Then he died October 15th, 1910 in Conway. He stood five foot nine and he weighed anywhere between 142 to 170 pounds. And um, he died because he got shot. A guy by the name of Walter Dipley. She said that Stanley Ketcher was molesting his uh, girlfriend. Just one of them things. Here you have Jim Jeffries. He was known as the baller maker. He's fighting Tom Sharkey. That fight took place in Corny Island, November 3rd, 1899. Jeffries received a decision at the end of 25 rounds. 
Fascinating. So that's the end of this particular series. I'm going to do another series like this. I just wanted to give you an idea of uh, boxing history. So this is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Salute to my subscribers. Salute to the old time fighters. Look out to, for, uh, for part two of Famous Fights Recall. Peace.